Hi, I'm Jill from June Taylor. Congratulations on your purchase of one of our tote kits. You might have our Weekender tote bag that looks like this, or you have our tote trio that contains three different types of totes. Our beverage tote, as you see here, our crossbody bag, as you see here, or our tablet tote, like this one. You see several different collections of fabric here. Yours might be one of these collections, or you might have a completely different one. We're going to be showing you how to make all of these totes, and for that I'm going to use this collection today. So let's get going. In today's video, we're actually going to showcase two of our different sewing kits. One is the Weekender tote, and that looks like this. And the other sewing kit is the Tote Trio, and that contains our tablet tote, which looks like this, our crossbody carry-all bag, which looks like this, and our bottle caddy, and this is used to hold either a wine bottle or a water bottle or maybe olive oil. The first thing you're going to have to do, regardless of if you have this kit or this kit or both of them, is to select what you want as your fabric A, B, and C. So we selected to use the floral fabric as our A in the Weekender tote, and you can see that shows us the main fabric here. And then uh, fabric B is the blue, and that is used in the binding and the lining. And fabric C is the green, and that's on the sides and as the handles. And if you look at in the tote trio, for the tablet tote, our floral is our fabric A here again as the accent, here as well, and then here is the main part of the bottle caddy. And then the blue is our fabric B, and that's the main part of the bag, and you can also see that in the base here. And C is the green, and it's used in the lining or somewhere else typically in, in the project. Now, you can change it up if you like. And in this example, we chose the blue as our fabric A. So the first thing is look at all your fabrics, figure out which ones you want for A, B, and C, and then we begin to cut. So let's get at the cutting. So here is your 11 by 37 inch section, and here are your two 4 by 37 inch sections. And for fabric B, we're going to need one 11 inch by 37 inch piece, and one 2 and a half inches by the width of fabric, which is 42 inches. For fabric C, we're going to need five 4 inch strips. So you can cut the whole amount into 4 inch strips and then subcut two of them to 37 inches and leave the other by width of fabric. This is our printed stabilizer sheet. So you're going to see this blue printing. And to start, we're going to cut about an inch away from the edge of the outside blue line. So you can take a scissors or a rotary cutter and just estimate about an inch away from that blue line all the way around the outside edge. Now that our fabrics are cut, we're going to join the two four inch strips to our middle section, right sides together. We suggest that you would put some pins in here as you go down, and then you will sew in a quarter inch seam allowance. Pin all the way down here, right sides together with our second four inch strip, pin all the way down here, and we're gonna do the same for the lining. So take the four inch and right sides together with the lining base fabric, pin all along the edge, and do the same on the other side. Once everything is pinned, we'll go to the sewing machine. We're now going to sew our strip to the main body, and we're going to sew in a quarter inch seam allowance, and we always want to back tack when we start. So start, back tack. We take the pins out as we sew. And we're just going to continue and sew all the way down. We're going to sew the other side as well in a quarter inch seam allowance. Once the outside of the bag is pieced, we're going to piece the lining. So we have our floral strip against the blue, and again we're going to sew in a quarter inch seam allowance, and we want to make sure to back tack at the beginning and the end. Our 
our sewing is done, now it's time to press. What we're going to do on the right side, or the pretty side of our tote, is we're going to press our seam allowances toward the center or toward fabric A, which is the floral fabric. So seam allowances toward the center, like this. If you have a burst of steam, now's the time to use it. And we're going to continue to do that all the way down. Seams toward the center or toward fabric A. Then we're going to take the lining, this is going to be on the inside of the bag, and we're going to do just the opposite, and we're going to press that to the outside edges. It's also fabric A because our outside edges are the floral again. So one seam to the inside and one seam to the outside. So the lining fabric we press toward the outside. And that way when we put these two pieces together, those seam allowances aren't going to be bunchy. Continue that all the way down. Our pressing is now complete. So let's put the beautiful side of our bag down and right sides together or pretty sides together we're going to layer our lining fabric section on top of the outside of the bag section like this so that they're nice together now one thing I want you to notice is that our seam allowances are going toward the outside on the top layer and toward the inside on the bottom layer so right sides or pretty sides together and then we're going to do is we're going to take our printed stabilizer and we're going to put that over the top. And you'll notice there's a solid line and a dotted line. What we want to do is make sure that the dotted line on the stabilizer lines up with the seam that we've just sewn. And you can see through and you can also feel that seam line in there. So you want to make sure that that's all lined up and then when it is, you're going to pin the stabilizer through all three layers. So stabilizer, bag lining, and the front of bag, like that. And we're going to pin all the way around, and I like to start at a corner and pin toward the corner, and we're going to pin all the way around this bag. Continue around until the entire thing is pinned. Our pins are all in place, so now we're going to sew on the dashed lines on both sides. So that's from here to here on the dashed side, and we are giving a one inch, go back tack one inch on either end. Then we're going to go to the other side, and we're going to sew on the dashed line, stopping and starting, giving it a one inch uh, back tack on either end. This end and this end will stay open. So just sew on the dashed lines. We're now going to sew on the dashed lines on either side. But first of all, we're going to back tab for about the first inch. And that back tab just helps keep everything from shifting. As we approach this corner, we're going to pivot, and I'll show you how to do that. Sure your needle goes down right at the corner, press her foot goes up, and we just rotate like this, and then press her foot back down right on that dashed line. You might need to roll this up a little bit. stitch until we reach the dash line. Take my pin out, press our foot, turn the bag, put the presser foot back down and continue on the dash line. it again and press her foot back down and continue on the dashed line. One side is done. 
I'm going to remove this and then we're going to do the same on the second side of the bag like this just on the dashed line again this will stay open our sewing is completed on the dashed line now we're going to cut on the solid line so either with a rotary cutter or with a scissors you're going to cut through all layers on the solid line when you get to these corners you want to follow the angle of the line like this and then when you get inside, you're actually going to clip to the corner like this. But don't clip through the stitch. Just clip to the corner and again the other direction and keep cutting. Our cutting is now complete and let's get a close-up of how it looks to cut the notches out. Next we're going to turn right sides out. So on either end you're going to find right sides and turn the entire bag Right. What you want to make sure now is that you get all the points out of these gussets. You can either use your finger or a pen to get a nice crisp corner there. Once everything is turned right side out, we will press. Our pressing is now complete. This will be the outside of our tote bag. And this will be the lining or the inside of our tote bag. So for now, we're going to set that aside. And we're going to get our three 42 inch strips, our 4 by 42 inch strips. One of the three strips is going to be cut in half. So we're going to simply fold it in half and either mark at the halfway point or just take your scissors and cut it in half like this. And then we're going to add one of these short pieces to each of the long pieces. To do that, you're going to take one long piece and one short piece right sides together and lay them perpendicular to each other like this. And then what you're going to do is get a ruler and a marking pen and we're going to make a line from corner to corner. So from this corner down to this corner we're going to make a line and that's eventually going to be our sewing line. And what's going to happen when we sew on that line, once I press it back we would have created a beautiful miter in here and we will have extended our strip to make a perfect shoulder strap. Let's go sew. So we're going to sew right on the angled line that we drew. Make sure your needle goes right on that line. There we go. Okay, the first one's done and we'll do the same with the second one. Our sewing is done and now we want to trim a quarter of an inch away from the sewing line. You can either use your scissors to trim a quarter of an inch or if you have a cutting mat this is the perfect time to use your ruler, your rotary cutter and your cutting mat. And You want to just take a quarter of an inch away from the seam line, cut like that and then let's look at how that perfectly it's going to look. So we're going to turn it over to the pressing side of our mat and we're going to press that seam allowance open and that'll help it lay nice and flat. So just open up the seam allowance and press. If you have a burst of steam you can go ahead and do that and then let's turn it over and see the result. There we go. Perfect miter. Now we want to measure this strip to 55 inches. So ideally you're going to have about 4 inches that you're going to need to cut off. Next step is we're going to press under 1 inch on the short edges. So we'll fold that up until we have 1 inch. It's nice if you have this pressing mat because it has a grid right on it. And you're going to do that on both ends of each of the straps. So you're going to be pressing wrong sides together 
Again, you can just use your pressing grid right here to make sure you get an exact inch. And we will repeat the same with the second strap. Next, we'd like to make a center pressed reference line down here. So we're going to fold wrong sides together like this and simply fold the strip in half. And that's going to create a crease on the folded edge, which we're going to use as our reference line in the next step. So just keep going down your strip like this, folding wrong sides together. If you have steam, give it a little burst of steam. Until your strip is completely pressed. And we're going to do that for both strips. Once we do that for the second strip, we're then going to go back, open this up, and wrong sides again together up into that reference point. So we'll go one side and then I'll do the other side. This is how we would do the first side, like this. And then the second side will be like this. So both of those edges will be finished. I'm bringing wrong sides together right up to that center pressed reference line. And I'll do this down the whole length of the strip and then I will do it on the other side as well. Let's take this, turn it the other direction and do the same thing toward that center pressed reference line. This will give us all nice finished edges. And continue on down to the end. And then lastly, you're just going to put those together like this and press one final time. This will make sure that your strap is completely finished on both sides. Now we will eventually stitch to secure this, but initially we're securing it with this press. And repeat on the other strap. Next we're going to top stitch on the long sides of the straps like this as close to the edge as you can. If you want to pin that, that's fine. I'm pretty comfortable just sewing it as is. So you can put your needle position down so you kind of know where you're where you're starting. And then just go ahead, tack a little, and then go ahead and sew right on that edge. Back tack here. And do the same on the other side and for the other strap. Next we're going to mark our bag placement for the straps. So from the top of the bag we want to go down 14 and 3 quarters inches. So I've got 14 and 3 quarters here. I'm just going to lay this pin along here so we know that dimension. And then we want to go 5 inches in from the sides. So I'll bring my ruler down like this and I'll go in five inches. And so that's going to be right about here. And I'll make a mark. And then of course I'll go five inches in from the other side, which is right about here. And I'll make a mark. And then what we're going to do is to position our straps over our mark like this and we're going to secure. Now you want to make sure that your strap isn't tangled at all and that it'll flow nicely around the bag. When we secure this, we're going to sew close to the edge all the way to the top, but we're going to stop two inches away from the top of the bag. And again, do the same two inches to the top. And then we're going to make a reinforcement X in here with our machine as well. And we're going to do that for the other side of the strap. And we're going to repeat that same whole process for the other side of the bag. Our straps are all pinned on the bag, and remember we're going to start and stop two inches from the top edge. 
I always put two pins here and that kind of reminds me that I'm not going to be starting at the top but starting at the pins and if you're ending up sewing near two pins you'll understand that that's where you've got to start and stop as well. So again you're going to sew very close to the edge of the straps and we definitely want a back tack. So let's all right. Now we're going to sew the other side down and make our X at the bottom to reinforce it. So we'll leave that needle down, raise our presser foot, pivot, and sew over to the other side like this. going to now pull the presser foot up and we're going to pivot diagonally back the other direction to make the first part of our X. All right, and then we're going to go back to the other side and finish our X off. One more time raising the presser foot and we're going to go diagonally back to the corner to finish off our X. And then you're going to back tack and you're going to repeat that for the other three ends of the straps. Our straps are sewn on and reinforced. Now we're going to put right sides together, so the pretty side, right sides together. The lining is now facing out. And we are going to pin the side seams and sew the side seams in a one half inch seam allowance. So you're just gonna wanna pin down each side. And when those pins are all in place, sew a half inch. All right, let's go to the machine. Now we're ready to sew our half inch seam allowance. So we want to definitely back tack this. And we'll back tack at the bottom. Repeat the same on the other side. Our side seams are sewn. And so now what we have to do is close these corners, discuss it. So we're going to take that and pull it just the opposite direction like this and pin that shut. So you can either put the seam allowances to one side or you can open them. Since this is pretty bulky, I like to open them like this. And then we're going to pin and sew in a half inch seam allowance. So I'm basically pinning that seam allowance open and adding a pin in both the top and the bottom. I'll pin this other seam allowance open as well. And then we'll put one more pin in here and then we're going to sew the gusset in a one half inch seam allowance. Come over to the machine and find your one half inch seam allowance and this is pretty bulky so you might want to go a little slow and we will need to back tack now let me just take this out and show you how nice this gusset looks when you're done turn the bag right side out just to give you a sneak preview of this but that's how nice that gusset finishes up and now we're ready for finishing. You should have one piece left, and this is the top strip that's gonna finish off the edge of our bag. It's sometimes called the binding. What we're gonna do is turn it over to the wrong side, and on the short end, we're going to press up about a half of an inch. 
So wrong sides together and press up about a half of an inch. And then we're going to fold this strip in half wrong sides together and press. Starting with our finished edge, we're going to start pinning our binding around the top edge of the bag. And you're just going to pin all the way around the outside of the bag. And you make sure the straps are down. We don't want to accidentally pin with those in the way. Now when we get done pinning this onto the top of the bag, you're going to have some extra of this blue binding strip left over. That's okay. Do not cut it. We want to have that extra strip nice and long. So just leave it as is until the next step. Our binding is now pinned all the way around our bag. And here's the extra tail that's left, and that's fine. What we're going to do now is we're going to move this pin, and we're going to start to sew in a quarter of an inch, about two inches beyond. So we're going to create another little tail right here, but we want to leave this finished edge open for now. So we're going to sew all the way around the bag in a quarter of an inch. We will back tack at the beginning and at the end. Now here's that long tail that we had hanging off. So we are going to sew all the way until about right here and let's then reevaluate trimming that tail. first. Alright, now, what we want to do now is trim this, but we want to make sure that we leave it long enough so that we can hide it in here. So let's bring this over and overlap it with where we started and give yourself a good inch. So my starting point is here. I'm going to give myself about right here, and then I'm going to trim that tail like this. And then we're going to open up this finished edge where we initially pressed under. We're going to just hide this right inside here like that and continue on sewing in a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm probably going to repin this into place now so that it stays secure while I'm sewing. Pick up where we left off. You still want to back tack. We've turned our bag right side out, and now we're going to take our binding from the lining side, loop it over to the top to the front side, and pin that in place. Once we pin that in place, we're going to secure the binding all the way around the edge. Our binding is now completely pinned and pressed, and all we're going to do is sew right on the edge all the way around the bag. So we changed our thread out to blue so that it looks nice on the binding. And good idea to back tag at the beginning and the end. I started right underneath this strap so that the back tacking eventually will be, um, you won't be able to see it. So we're gonna stay close to the edge.
our binding is now sewn down so we're good on the outside and on the lining. The next thing we're going to do is bring these handle straps up like this and we're going to finish sewing them. Remember we left this open so we could sew the binding. We're going to finish sewing on the edge right up until here and make that X with our stitches to reinforce it. Again, sew up until here and then make that X to reinforce. Our fabric A for the kids is going to be this beautiful floral. You need seven pieces total and to start out you're going to cut your two and a half inch strips off one edge. You're going to need a 22 and a half and a 19 and a half strip that's two and a half inches wide. Next we cut these three pieces. This is your 18 and a half inch by eight inch piece and then we need two five by fives and those are here. Last but not least we cut these two pieces and that's our 23 and a half by 11 and a half and 23 and a half by four and a half. Our fabric B is the blue. For cutting fabric B, you're going to cut a two and a half inch strip by the width of fabric because you're going to need 42 inches of it. So we cut that first. And then we went and cut our two pieces eight by six and a half. And then our next cut is this entire row right here. What we're really after is this 23 and a half inch by seven and a half inch piece. This will end up going into our fabric stash, but we're also going to need this two by 10. And then last but not least, we're going to need this piece, which is eight and a half by 19 and a half. So this piece also goes into your scrap bin. Our fabric C is the green fabric, and we need four pieces of that. So we need a two and a half inch strip, uh, 42 inches by the two and a half, so we cut that first. And then we cut our next row three and a half inches. And we're going to need these two pieces out of that, which is three and a half by 19 and a half. And last but not least, we're gonna cut an eight inch row, and we need an eight inch by 30 and a half inch piece. So then this piece and this piece end up going in our scrap bin. The first step is we're going to cut the printed stabilizer, leaving about a one inch margin around all sides. So there are four things we're going to cut. We're going to cut the crossbody carryall, the tablet tote, and this is the bottle carrier, and we also need the base for the bottle carrier. So you're just going to use the scissors, cut this out, and again, leave about an inch all the way around the edges like that. To create the front of our bay, we're going to sew the two and a half inch piece of fabric A, which is the floral in our case, to the three and a half inch fabric C, which is green. So you just want to take right sides together like this, line it up, and pin that in place. And we're going to sew in a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're going to do that to both sides of fabric A. So let's get our pinning done and go to the machine for the first side and then we'll do the second side. We're going to sew in a quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to back tack at the beginning and the end. Now that that's done, we'll take our other green piece and sew that right sides together against fabric A after we're done pinning. And we're going to sew in a quarter of an inch down this seam as well. Our sewing is now done, so we're going to press the seams outward or toward the outside edges. So let's flip it over to the front side and check that. Now we're going to take our lining piece, which is the blue in our case, right sides together with our sewn front, and we're going to line up all the edges. And then over the top of that, we're going to place our printed stabilizer. And what we want to do is make sure that our sewn lines are lining up with our seam lines that we had just sewn like that. And there's enough 
overlap um, on each end. Then we're going to pin this on and we're going to start sewing on the dashed lines from here all the way around following those dashed lines until here. So once you get this lined up, we're going to go ahead and pin and sew. So we're going to start here where I have the two pins and sew on the dashed line all the way around, pivoting where it's indicated. So we're going to take our pins out of this corner area and put our needle in here and begin sewing. And we will back tack here. Lift your presser foot up, pivot, and put it back. the two pins, I know I'm going to end and back tack. Next step is we're going to cut on the solid line all the way around the edge. edge we're going to turn right sides out and try to push out all of the corners as well. Our stabilizer will now be in the middle of the bag and our bag will automatically be lined. We'll push these corners out and then we'll go to the iron to press. Our final press is done and we also pressed under a quarter of an inch on our opening of our end. And our next step is we're gonna to go to the machine and top stitch that end shut. We're gonna to top stitch this edge shut. Now we're going to take our strap piece and we're going to fold the ends one inch under wrong sides together and press and that is going to create a finished end and we're going to do the same on the other side one inch under and press it's nice if you have these grid lines like that so you can match it up and then we're going to create a center reference line and to do that we're going to fold right sides together or excuse me wrong sides together like this and simply press and that's going to create a reference line for us to follow down the center of this strap. Now when that's done, we're going to open this back up and we have that center reference line. What we're going to do now is take our raw edge, bring it wrong sides together up to that center reference point and press. We're going to do that on both sides so bring that raw edge up to the center and press. Now we'll turn it around and do the same on the other side, bringing that raw edge toward the center reference line and press. And when that is complete, we are going to now fold it over so right sides meet with right sides to create our strap with a finished end. And then when that is complete, we're going to be able to stitch that closed on both sides. Now we're just going to top stitch on both long edges of our strap on the right and the left side. 
and you want to be pretty close to the edge. With the rounded edge on your right, we're going to take our strap and secure it down four and a half inches, one, two, three, four and a half, and about one inch in, which basically puts this strap right in the center of that green area. You're going to put a pin in place, and then you're going to bring your strap around and make sure that it's not twisted, and do the same on the other side. So we want to go four and a half inches down, one, two, three, four and a half, and one inch in from the edge, which again is kind of in the center of here, and put another pin in place. And then what we're going to do is take it to the machine, and we're going to secure this with an X. And that X is going to make sure that the strap stays nice and secure. Okay, let's take our pin out, because we've got our position, needle down. Start by going across the strip, and then we will lift our presser foot up, pivot, pivot, and make our X going back down to the corner here, and we'll pivot, go back up this side. And one last pivot to finish our X down to the end of the strap. And we're going to do the same with the other strap. Our straps are now secure, so we're going to turn our bag over and we're going to fold up the lining or the inside seven inches. So let's bring it down to the zero line, find number seven and fold it up seven inches like that, wrong sides together or lining sides together. And then what we're going to do is just sew to finish off in a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to pin these two edges and we will take that over to the sewing machine and sew. Now we're going to top stitch in a quarter of an inch all the way down both sides. And we'll do the same on the other side. Our side seams are now sewn, so we're going to put the flap down, line it up, and just give it one final press. And then if you want, you can add some embellishments. You could put a snap here, or you could actually cover a button and put that here, or you could get a decorative button and put something like that here as well. So that's up to you, however you want to close it, or you can leave it plain like this. We're ready to begin our tablet tote. So we have our four and a half inch piece of our fabric A, which is the floral, and we're gonna pin that to our fabric B. So right sides together and raw edges even. We're just gonna pin and sew in a quarter inch seam allowance. So you're gonna pin all the way down, and then we'll go to the machine and sew. We're going to sew in a quarter of an inch seam allowance and we should back tack at the beginning and the end. Now we're going to press the seam allowance toward fabric B, which in our case is the blue. So give that a good press and we'll turn it over and make sure it's correct on the front side when we're done. If you have a burst of steam in your iron, now's the time to use it. So let's just turn it over and make sure it looks good on the other side. All right, now I'm going to take the pressing board away and what we're going to do next is we're going to layer our lining with the top that we just finished sewing right sides together 
or the pretty sides together and raw edges even like that. Then we're going to take our printed stabilizer and we're going to align this small dotted line with the seam line that we just got done sewing. So the little dots on the stabilizer match up with our seam lines like this. And then what we're going to do is pin this in place and sew on the dashed line on both long edges. So the short edges stay open, our long edges are sewn on the dashed line. So I'm going to go ahead and start pinning this in place for our two long sides and then we'll go to the sewing machine. We're going to begin sewing on the dashed line on both sides and we want to back tack a full inch. So let's get our needle in position. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Our stitching is done and now we're going to cut on the solid line. You can use the scissors or if you have a rotary cutting mat and ruler, that works really easily too. So we just line the ruler up on our line with the solid line and cut. And then again on the long sides. One more short side and one more long side. Okay, now what we're going to do is turn right sides out. So the stabilizer will be in the middle. You can do this from either end. That's why we had you back tack that inch so that you can make sure this all stayed se secure. So this is your actual lining side that I've got out now. And then this is the front side. And what we're going to do now is turn this over, turn my cutting mat over to the pressing side and give this a good press. My pressing is complete. So now we're going to fold wrong sides together so our pretty side is out. And we're going to fold the tablet tote in half like this. And we're going to sew in a quarter of an inch up the sides, leaving one inch open at the top here and here. So if you want, you can start out by measuring where an inch is and where the pin is is where I'll start and I'll sew all the way down to the bottom and repeat on the other side. We're going to now sew a quarter of an inch in from the edge. We start an inch down so right where the pin is we'll start and we'll just do a, a slight back tack. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Both sides are now sewn and we've left that inch open on the top like this. Now we're going to set that away and we are going to work on the strap and the loop. So this is our fabric B. We're going to take it and we're going to fold wrong sides together and just get a nice center pressed line here. The center press line, we're going to reference that in the next step. So just wrong sides together all the way down until we have this pressed. Now let's go back to the beginning and we're going to open that back up and here is our center reference line. We're going to fold wrong sides together up to that center reference line and press and then do it again on the other side. So you're just bringing that fabric up wrong sides together to the center pressed reference line and pressing again. Now we'll turn it the other way and do the same on the other side. The last step is we are going to now fold right sides together to create our finished strap. We're going to press this and then sew along both sides.
before we go to the sewing machine, we're going to do the same thing with our shorter piece, and this is going to become the loop on our tote. Now we're going to secure our finished edges in place by sewing along the long edge fairly close to this outside edge here. And now we'll go down the other side. Now that our strap is complete, we're going to do the exact same on our loop. Handle and the tab are done and sewn, so we're going to set those aside. And we're going to get our binding fabric, which is fabric A. We're going to turn it over to the wrong side, and we're going to press up a half inch on each end. So you'll be pressing wrong sides together, a half inch on the short ends. And then we will press our binding strip in half, wrong sides together. And that's how we will create our decorative binding. Now we're going to take the body of our tote and we're going to turn it inside out so that the lining is out. And in our case, that's the floral print. And once we get this out, we're going to be able to attach the binding. All right. So we're going to take our binding and starting with the pressed under short end, we're going to start pinning the binding, raw edge of the binding, to the raw edge of the top of the bag. Actually pin in this direction because this is the way I'll be sewing. So go ahead and start pinning and we're going to go all the way around the bag. I want to show you though what's going to happen when we get to the side seams. So get a couple more pins in here. So raw edge to raw edge. Now when we get to these side seams that are still open, we want to butt them up against each other like this so that when we sew our binding, we're essentially going to close that gap. So butt them up right against each other. I'll show you one more time. And pin the binding in place and continue to pin all the way around. My binding is pinned all the way around, and you're gonna notice that I have a long tail hanging here. That's fine, don't cut it. We just wanna leave that as is for now. Now we're gonna go in two inches, so right about here, and we're gonna to start to sew, back tack, sew in a quarter inch all the way around, and we're gonna stop about two inches before our last pin. Again, here's my finished edge, so I'm gonna go about two inches up, and I'm gonna start sewing with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and with back tacking. And here on the inside, you can see that my two um, side seams are butted up against each other as my binding goes over the top. getting near the end and I want to leave about two inches before my beginning point. So I'm just going to make a few more stitches and back tack. I've stitched up to here. Now what I'm going to do is take this tail laid over the top of the binding where I began stitching and make sure there's about a one inch overlap and trim the rest off. So I'm going to trim off this little piece right here. Okay. And then what you're going to do is open this up and tuck that tail right into the binding like this and put that back in place and continue sewing around the edge to finish your binding. I'm going to add one more pin right where I tucked so I know it stays in place. And now I'm going to go pick up right where I left off. That was my back tap. Back tap. I'm going to pick up right there and finish the binding. 
I would backtrack again. Okay, and we're going to finish right where we started with a little back tack. So you can see our binding is sewn in place, and here is where that little tuck went in for the tail. And we'll show you how to finish that off. Our binding is now sewn on. So we're gonna turn the bag right side out. And let's put the back side up. We're gonna just take this binding and pull it away like that and get our strap. And we're going to pin this one inch away from the side and butt it up against the raw edge right here and pin in place. Bring your strap around, make sure that it's not tangled and do the same with the other one. So one inch away from the edge and then on our raw edge that we had just sewn the binding. And for our button closure, we're going to take this one and you can just overlap the two ends and center this right in the middle of the tote. Put a pin in place there. And now we're going to bring our binding over like this and pin into place all the way around the edge and press. So if you want, you can take this pin out and simply repin everything through the binding. Bring that all the way around. And that covers the edge of the tote and we're going to pin that in place and press. Now that our binding is pinned and pressed, we're going to go to the machine and we're going to sew close to the outside edge of the binding. We start at the back of the tote and just center that needle right over the edge of the binding. And I would back tap. Finishes off our binding. Now you can bring the tab around to the front like this and add a button or some kind of a decorative closure. Here's a couple examples of buttons that we've added to some of our other tote designs, a little flower, rhinestone, or a solid red, and we're done. We're going to join these two blue ends to our floral end. This is our fabric A and our fabric B by putting right sides together, raw edges even, and sewing in a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you just want to pin these on either side. We're going to sew in a quarter inch and let's back tack at the beginning and the end. And we'll do the same on the other end. Our next step is we're going to press our seam allowances, the raw edges, toward the outside or fabric B. In my case, it's the blue. Just give that a good press. And then what we're going to do is layer our lining right sides together with the top. So in my case, it's the green with this piece to top, right sides together and raw edges even. And when we get our printed stabilizer, we're going to line up the dotted line on the edge of our seam. So put your stabilizer on top like this, and that dotted line goes right on the edge of the seam, and it's right on the edge of the seam here as well. We're going to pin this in place, and we're going to sew on the dashed line. So all the way around the edge on the top and on the bottom, we're going to sew up until here and then we're going to back tack and pick up our sewing right here, back tack and go to the end. So sew the two sides, leaving this open after you've pinned it. So now we're just going to sew right on the dashed line through all layers. And we're going to do a nice back tack here. Now 
where I've got the two pins here, that's where I'm going to need to stop and back tack and then pick it up on the other side again. this side and that'll leave that opening for us to eventually turn right sides out. All right, and now we'll do the same on the other side. Our sewing is done. Now we're going to cut on the solid line. You can use a scissors or a rotary cutter. The one thing you want to be very careful of is to follow the line, but also to cut in these notches. So I'm going to actually use the snippers here. You don't want to, you want to cut up to the seam line, but you don't want to cut into the seam line. So you're just basically taking these little triangles out and that's going to help when we turn right sides out. That's going to help those rounded areas turn out a little bit nicer. We've trimmed on the solid line. We're going to turn right sides out. What that will do is put our stabilizer in the center. So you can use this little neck area right here and pull everything through. Give it a good press. Just really want to make sure you get all of those rounded areas pushed out. And that will form this nice rounded area in here. Press the other side. Now let's work on this area right here. We're going to press this, and as we do that, we're going to turn under that quarter of an inch on each side here, and then we will stitch that down. So let's get that nice and crisp. go to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch that down. We're going to top stitch this opening shut from here to here and for that we can go close to the edge. Now we're going to fold right sides together like this and we're going to sew the two side seams in a quarter inch seam allowance. So you want to line them up, pin, and sew both sides in a quarter of an inch. We're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance and sew our sides together. And we'll continue on the other side. Now we're going to set the body of our bottle tote aside and we've got three pieces left, two squares and our printed stabilizer. Turn one of the squares over so the wrong side is facing up. Put the stabilizer in the middle and what we're going to do is pin this on and we're going to sew on the dashed lines all the way around the edge and then we're going to sew that X in the center as well. So let's go to the sewing machine. Now we're just going to sew on the dashed line, first the circle and then through the X.
Next, you're gonna trim on the solid line. And then you're gonna take the last square and you're going to put that with the stabilizer in the center like this. And we're going to pin this on and basically sew right over the same circle and the same X as we did before. So I'm gonna sew right over the stitching lines in a circle and then right over the X. So again, right over my previous sewing lines, we'll do the circle and then the X. Now that that's done, we're going to trim right around the edge following our previous circular cut. What you're going to end up with is the base of the bottle caddy and it's finished on both sides. Now we're going to take our base, it's still inside out so the lining side is up, right sides in here. We're going to take the circular base that we made and where one of the X's comes to the outside edge, we're going to line that up with our seam allowance and we're going to put a pin there, okay? And we're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to use a lot of pins for this, but it really makes it much easier to sew, okay? So now we'll put a pin over here. All right, and then we're going to find the center of these two points and we're going to put a pin there so where the X is is going to be the center between these two and we'll put a pin there. All right and we'll do the same on the other side is find the center and find the X and we're going to put a pin there. And now what you want to do is take these sections like this and you want to add two more pins here, two more here, and two more here, and so on. So line up the raw edges and put two more pins in each of those four sections, each quadrant. Okay? And we're going to continue to do that until our entire bottle caddy is pinned to the base, right sides together. Your pins are all in place, and now we're going to sew in a quarter inch seam allowance, and you can even follow this line that you created earlier when you were making the base. Just be careful, because you have a lot of pins here. So you're gonna slide right under your presser foot like this, and then sew in a quarter of an inch. So you can see that we've sewn in a quarter of an inch all the way around and it's now complete. Our last step is to turn right sides out and fill it with a bottle of something, water or wine or you can even put a skein of yarn in here as a gift or lovely bottle of olive oil or vinegar. So our bottle carrier tote is complete and we really hope you've enjoyed making this project. We love designing these kits and hope you've enjoyed making them. For other ideas and inspiration, visit our website at www.junetaylor.com.